Hi, and welcome to Haltech Technically Speaking. Today, we're going to be having a look at the different methods we can use to wire an ECU into your car. There's a bunch of different ways you can wire your car, starting with the simplest, a direct plug-in. What we've got here is a direct plug-in for a Nissan S15 Silvia. We've got a huge range of pro plugins, so jump on the website, have a look to see if we've got a pro plugin to suit your particular model. Now, what we do here, this has got the factory ECU connector here. So all we do is we remove the factory computer from the car, plug the factory harness straight in here, hit the key, the car will start and run. You can also add a couple of extra wires to our auxiliary connector on the back here to put a couple of extra inputs or a couple of extra outputs. You might want to add an oil or fuel pressure sensor, something that the factory computer didn't originally support. We've also got an external map sensor, a plug here for the CAN communication, so you might want to plug a dash system or something like that in, as well as the USB port so that we can program the ECU. Now, this is the easiest way to just wire up your car get everything going and away you go if you're lucky enough to have a car that we support with the Pro Plug-in Series. Now, if you're not lucky enough to have a car that we support with our Pro Plug-in Series, you're gonna need one of our universal ECUs, something like this one. So this has got our main ECU connectors on the front here. We've got the pocket, which includes our comms cable, as well as our CAN communications port and with several different methods of wiring this ECU. So we'll put that back in, we'll sit that there. Now, the first and the easiest method of wiring in an Elite 2500 is our patch harnesses. So these patch harnesses are made and they convert the Haltech connectors across into a factory connector. So you would plug in your factory harness here after removing your factory ECU. The other end, our Haltech ECU connectors, would plug straight into our universal range, and away you go. On the back of the patch harness here, you'll notice there's a couple of extra connectors. Now, these connectors are used for extra inputs and outputs that weren't in the factory harness. So, like the Pro Series plug-in, you might want to add an oil or fuel pressure sensor, something like that. Now, don't be too worried if we don't have a patch harness set up for your car. We've still got plenty of wiring methods to go through. The next one being the plug and pin set. Now, with a plug and pin set, We've got our AMP ECU connectors, which are supplied as the plugs and pins, like the name suggests. So using this plug and pin method means that you've removed the factory computer from the car altogether, you've cut the factory ECU connector off, you've crimped the Haltech pins on, repopulated the AMP connectors, and you're ready to go. Now, if we're not doing a system like that, the next one is a piggyback style installation using our basic wiring harness. Now, the basic wiring harness comes unterminated at one end. It's about 1.2 meters long. All the wires on one end are all open. On the other end, terminated straight into our elite connectors. So they plug straight in. From here, we wire our short wiring harness into the car's factory wiring harness. Now, there's two different options here. You can do a piggyback style installation, which means that you leave the factory computer in the car. It can control stuff like the taco, the dashboard, any of the factory functions in the car that your engine management system doesn't need to or possibly can't. Now, on this end, we'd wire our fuel injectors, our ignition, our power supplies, all of our spare sensors. We'd set them up in the ECU, get the car started and running. Now, that's known as a short wiring harness installation method. So nice and simple, utilises a factory wiring harness. It's really important that your factory wiring harness is in good condition if you're gonna be using an installation using a short harness. So if the factory wiring harness in your car is already looking a little bit ragged, bit of a bird's nest, it's not the best idea to be wiring in a brand new short harness and then relying on the connections in your factory loom. So we'll pop that one to the side and we'll have a look for the premium two and a half meter long universal harness. The premium two and a half meter wiring harness comes terminated on the ECU connector end and what we call flying lead on the wiring side. So we'll start at the ECU connector end. So we've got terminated to our normal ECU connectors. So if we just pop them into the normal ECU straight on one side, you'll notice that we've got 
a CAN connector here so we can plug in any of our extra devices. We've got the Haltech fuse box assembly which comes on the wiring harness. So this has got fuses and relays for our injectors, ignition, fuel pump and the ECU power itself. As we move further down the harness, you'll notice that we've got a 52 millimeter grommet here. Now, this grommet is here to protect the wiring harness when it passes through the firewall. As we pass down the wiring harness past the grommet, you'll notice all the different wire colors. So every different wire color is coded and is in the Haltech wiring diagram. So I know it looks like a lot of wires, but once you go through the wiring diagram, it's not as daunting as it looks. Something else that's gonna help a lot is that each group of wires is coded. So we've got written here, for example, injectors. So this bunch of wires here are all our injector outputs and a power supply that goes to the injectors. The next wire that I pick here is pink, switched 12 volts ignition. So this pink wire would go to our 12 volt ignition source. The next wire, a green idle control wires. So there's four of those, they will go to our four wire idle control motor. Any of these wires that don't get used in your particular application can simply be pulled out of the harness and put to the side. If the premium wiring harness with all of these wire colors, fuse box assembly is just a little bit too daunting for you, don't be too worried. We've still got one more installation method, the terminated harness. The terminated harness, as the name suggests, is terminated into the Haltech connectors on one end, but it's also terminated into all of the factory connectors on the other side. So that means that things like the coil connectors, injectors, the air temp, throttle position, all of the factory connectors for that engine are already terminated and crimped on for you. That means that if you put a 2JZ engine into whatever conversion car you like, lay this harness over the top, plug everything in, get battery power, ground, put your ignition source, hit the key, you're ready to go. Let's take a better look at the ignition harness in this 2JZ terminated harness kit. Now, what we'll find is that we've got two ends here. So this end is terminated into either our capacitive discharge ignition system or our factory ignition module or our HPI, our high power ignition system. It's then fused, bit of wiring, comes down to the other end here, which is terminated with our factory coil connectors as well as power and ground. So everything's terminated to length so that it suits the factory engine. So this power and ground wires would go straight down to the back of the starter motor. Each plug is labeled, this one here, ignition six, followed by ignition five, four, three, two, and one. One being furthest away from the firewall, the one that's at the front of the car. So this makes it so easy to plug everything straight in because it's all just labeled for you. No chance of confusing anything. Plug it all together, load the base map into your computer, the car will start and run. So whether in your application you're using a terminated harness, whether you're wiring up with a plug and pin set, a direct plug-in, a patch harness, or one of our premium long harnesses, don't forget to visit our website to the downloads page where we've got a huge range of resources for you to look over. All the instruction manuals, loads of wiring diagrams, and there's lots of base maps in our ESP and ECU manager software. All of these things are gonna help you in getting your engine up and running as quickly as possible. I'm really pleased that you took the time to watch this video so you could determine which wiring technique is gonna be the best for your project in order to get the best results. My name's Scott, and thanks for watching.